Right, so uh, with all the excitement happening around me, I'll uh, say hello and uh, welcome you to another little walk. Doing a bit of exploring today, uh, just down in the Goit Valley. And it's a kind of a follow on from a video I did uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, actually last year by the time you probably see this uh, and I'd just like to say this is actually being filmed uh, in compliance with the uh, restrictions that were in place at the time. So you may have seen a video I did of a canal walk along the uh, Macclesfield Canal and Peak Forest Canals and uh, this kind of follows on from that, it's just a bit of exploring. Uh, you'll remember uh, I said that the Peak Forest Canal had its terminus at Whaley Bridge and uh, it was used for carrying stone and raw materials, minerals, uh, down from there into Manchester. But round about the same time they were wondering how to get the cotton from Manchester to the textile industry in the East Midlands and uh, I also mentioned that there was a, a railway for bringing the stone down from out of the Peak District down to Whaley Bridge and uh, the area where I am now is part of the remains of that railway. Behind me you may have seen as you visited the Goit Valley this small reservoir just on the access road down from Long Hill and there's another smaller one just further down and these were the reservoirs used to fill steam engines for the Cromford and High Peak Railway. And I'm just going to explore a little bit of the uh, Cromford and High Peak Railway route now. So it was all very well uh, building something to get the uh, raw materials down to Whaley Bridge but they were actually looking to solve a bigger problem and uh, to get the cotton to the textile industry over in the East Midlands uh, they were currently having a big long detour around the Trenton Mersey Canal and across to the East Midlands and they were looking for a way of improving that and they looked at uh, various ways they were thinking of a canal right over the top of the Peak District um, but that would have been very expensive and also very difficult to keep watered over the porous limestone across the top of the peaks. So eventually they uh, engaged Josias Jessup, who was William Jessup's son, to survey the route for a tramway or railway. And in 1825, around about the same time as the Act of Parliament was passed for the peak Forest Canal, an Act of Parliament was passed for this railway from Whaley Bridge across the Peak District and down to Cromford between Matlock and Derby I think and it was quite forward thinking uh, in that they applied for a tramway or railway as I think only about that time really some of the earliest railways were coming into being the Stockton and Darlington and railways like that so it was quite forward thinking that they didn't just apply for a tramway that they recognised the coming of the steam age. Splendid views from up here. Look over the Goit Valley. So the 33 mile railway uh, was to have nine inclines, several of which are over on this side, and the reservoirs that I've just shown you, uh, they were for the steam engines for two of the inclines, Bunsel Lower and Bunsel Upper Incline, and then there was inclines at uh, Fernilly and Whaley Bridge, I think there might have been one other down on the, the route down into Whaley Bridge. And uh, the, the static steam engines initially hauled the trains of wagons up on ropes and chains and on the flat sections the uh, wagons were horse drawn and then uh, later in the life of the railway locomotive steam engines were used 
out of the uh, nine inclines the Hopton incline was the steepest incline in the country and also the steepest adhesion railway in the country adhesion being the the term used for you know using the friction of the train's wheels against the railway rather than any kind of uh, sort of funicular type railway to propel the trains along so uh, yeah it's uh, quite a historic and old railway after opening in 1831 bits of it were uh, gradually abandoned and finally it was uh, completely abandoned in 1967 uh, having never made a profit in all of its existence apparently so I'm just heading along I think it's around about a kilometre and a half to the portal of uh, Burbage Tunnel and there's two Burbages in the Peak District uh, the famous one being Burbage Edge up above uh, Hather Stage not far from Sheffield and uh, this is a different one named after a, a little village just outside Buxton but again called Burbage Edge and uh, there's a 500 yard tunnel that went through the hillside there not sure what finally uh, persuaded them to say we're uh, we're not going over the top with a couple of more inclines we're uh, we're going through the tunnel but uh, there must have been geographical and economical reasons why they could do that there's very few signs of the railway itself remaining but you can see certain features like this big embankment to carry the railway across one of the uh, cloughs that head down into the Goit Valley see how the course of the railway sweeps around following the contour and then right around the hillside so we're just uh, approaching the portal to Burbage Tunnel now you can perhaps see why they've uh, chosen to go through not over it's not a single steep incline it's uh, just a kind of a, a jumble of moorland and cloughs as you can see the entrance is long sealed over you can't access the southern entrance anymore uh, it's on private ground and I think the farmer whose land it's on has had enough of being pestered by people and uh, you uh, yeah, you just aren't welcome there one interesting thing I read that after the Second World War this tunnel was used by the RAF to store leftover chemical weapons so uh, maybe a good idea to stay out hence why they've got a stout steel door locking it off and uh, warning you of the uh, risk of fallen rocks yeah, interesting place 500 yards long 100 gives you a good idea of the gauge of the railway So we've just kind of taken a right just by the portal of the bridge and we're not following either of the official paths but uh, you're on access land and you can see uh, kind of a beaten track heading up directly across the top to uh, Burbage Edge. It's a little bit muddy, a little bit slippy, a little bit precarious but we'll give it a shot. Stopping for a breather. Quite a steep climb. Just see, looking back across the path that the uh, tunnel takes through the hill, 
the uh, Goit Valley can get quite crowded, it's very well visited. But this bit, definitely the path less trodden. And uh, as we get a bit more altitude, you can see on the opposite slope, the line of the railway around the hillside, curving back round, disappearing from, from view, and then coming back round to uh, disappear below us to where the uh, tunnel entrance is. Fabulous views, but epically muddy. Definitely boots, definitely gaiters. <laughs> Very glad of my uh, walking pole as well. You can see uh, Castle Maze. And the whole expansive Coombs Moss now. Did a video of a walk around there a few months back. Got a link down below because uh, that had a fabulous walk. Just had a thought, Anthony Johnson, if you're watching, that's the uh, extent of the walk we were discussing. Circuit of the tops around about nine miles. Check out Anthony's uh, channel if you haven't already. Loads of great walks on there. Town of uh, Buxton stretched out below us. And we're just coming round up to the trig point. go. Burbage Edge. The other one. 500 metres. New one on me. And you see over to the old Cat and Fiddle pub on the other side. And round to good old Shining Tour. And back the other way, unfortunately, into the sun. Through the mud and up to Axe Edge and Axe Edge Moor. Well, it's a, a lovely day and the views are absolutely magnificent up here. I'm quite pleased because uh, I wasn't quite sure I was going to get up here. Didn't really know what route I was going to take. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to drop down the other side and then uh, pick up the path to the right back down towards the Goit Valley. Now back to the railway for a minute before we leave it. The tunnel emerges just down there and you can see the farm that I mentioned but uh, yeah no access to that. But the railway bed heads off towards Axe Edge and the way off towards the terminus at Cromford, uh, which will be another sort of 25 miles away. Uh, but uh, whether I can zoom in, you can see the, the, uh, the bed crossing the uh, countryside there, just leaving Buxton. Now, uh, I mentioned the need to, whoops, <laughs> mentioned the need to transport uh, cotton from Manchester across to the East Midlands and also the minerals and stone into the heartlands of the Industrial Revolution in Manchester. Uh, but I also got to wondering, there are two coal seams up here uh, in the Goit Valley 
one uh, well they both run actually across one of them was a surface seam that was quarried uh, down beside the goit uh, there's uh, the goit's cliff quarry I think was a stone quarry but there's also remnants of coal mining down there and there was also an underground seam that ran across from Burbage up here uh, right across the valley and it was that was mined by tunnels running into the hillside from Burbage uh, but I did a bit of research and uh, apparently the coal was very poor quality so not really viable for use in houses or uh, most industry and I believe that most of it was used up here uh, for powering or burning in lime kilns to extract the lime out of limestone so um, probably not transported on the railway down into Whaley Bridge Right I've just come through this gate off the moorland and I think I've had enough of mud for one day so I think what I'm going to do is just head down across this pathway and pick up the old Buxton to Macclesfield Road that I mentioned before it's uh, it's just a broken down track these days as I remember it and I'm going to head across that way and down to Derbyshire Bridge and then cut back down the Goit Valley that way and uh, have a rest from the mud but uh, I think there's one or two nice things to show you down there anyway so uh, stick with me we'll see what we find back to railways again something I wasn't expecting I'll show you a bit closer when I get down to the uh, old road but you actually come out where the old road crosses the track of the Cromford and High Peak Railway so you can see the uh, bridge there and then you can see the bed of the railway snaking off in front of us towards that farm on the way towards Harper Hill just outside Buxton So we've turned right now, or I've turned right because I'm on my own, <laughs> and heading back up the old road away from that bridge. And uh, yeah, that will definitely be leaving the railway behind until we get right around to the other end of the uh, Goit Valley down to the bottom of Irwood Reservoir. But it's turning into a really nice walk, I wasn't. Uh, sure what to expect I was only setting out to do a bit of a an explore along part of the bed of the railway uh, where it's turning into a quite a nice moorland hike and uh, yeah now back up this uh, nice old road good few years since I've walked along here nice little uh, waterfall down there appears to be man-made with a wall next to it so there's evidence of some quarrying over there as well and then as you sweep on round just at the bottom you can see the railway embankment that would dam the valley but there's a culvert cut into the bottom of it that you can just see down at the bottom Mist blowing in over Axe Edgemoor. I've got a bit of a decision to make now. Can head back over the moors, down into the Goit Valley. But uh, I think I'll just stick to the old road, get down to Derbyshire Bridge, and turn right. Just coming down to. Uh, Derbyshire Bridge now where the car park is and we'll just be turning right where the no entry signs are just about uh, 
seven and a bit kilometres in now. And the circle bridge. The uh, fledgling river goit. And just up behind the uh, dark face. Uh, I think that is one of the old open cast stall faces that I mentioned earlier. opens out and you can see across to where we walked across before over uh, Burbage Edge can't quite see where the uh, trig point is though whether it'll open out a bit more as I come round the bend yeah I suspect the trig point is somewhere up there right in the centre and then we've skirted around past Goit's Moss and then back down the Goit Valley Right, I've made another snap decision I'm going to cut back across country again heading just crossing, dropping down across a little footbridge and picking up a path that uh, slopes back to the kind of eastern edge of the Irwood Reservoir and then on back up to the car park that I was uh, in earlier so uh, I know it's going to be muddy but uh, yeah just fancy that path so uh, I'm going to head down that way now I think I might just stop down by the river for a sandwich though around about 12.30 now a bit peckish Yeah, pretty little spot for lunch, that will do. Is it Goit's Club Quarry now? Look at that tree full of mistletoe and no one to kiss. Very seasonal. Didn't really look very much like mistletoe when I got close up, but never mind. <laughs> Proper boot sucking mud along here. Wood Reservoir just coming into view. Difficult to film without falling on your uh, BTM. The path kind of cuts around one of the inlets. Just dropping down to that little inlet now. So uh, should be able to spin around show you stop for a breather one last little lung burster on the way back as we climb up to the car park just savouring the views back up this clough Whew, got a sweat on on that one yeah. ended up in a circuit of around 13 kilometres or uh, just over 8 miles but uh, really interesting and uh, varied scenery so uh, I'll record a little section to at the end to uh, show you where we've been on the map 
but as usual I'll also plot it on the OS Maps app and give you a link for that so you can have a look but other than that it's time to bid you farewell and say thanks very much for joining me and if you've not already subscribed and you have enjoyed it I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the button and ding the bell thank you very much for joining me again Whew. and I'll see you very soon cheers now okay back home now so I just want to give you a quick uh, shifty around the map uh, this is the um, Whaley Bridge to Buxton Road, uh, Long Hill, and this is the, the road that drops down into the Goit Valley. And we parked just at this first car park here, next to uh, the little reservoir at the top of the Bunsell Incline. This is the path of the disused railway meandering along following the contour and round and that's where the uh, disused tunnel entrance is you can see it reappears there over towards the other side nearer to Buxton uh, these are the two paths I mentioned this one drops down into Buxton and you can cut around that way if you want um, and this other one uh, which at the time I thought might have been of use to us, but it actually goes back the way you came. So I ignored both of those and just cut to the right of the tunnel entrance and then climbed steeply up to Burbage Edge. Now the path there is really quite steep and slippy, so bear that in mind if you want to come this way, you may want to skirt round on some of the better paths, but this is up to the uh, trig point here then drop down following the path and picked up the official path here which then dropped us down to where we saw that other railway bridge and the disused track of the railway disappearing towards Harper Hill turned right there and followed the old Buxton to Macclesfield route down as far as Darbyshire Bridge turned right and followed the path down to here where I stopped for lunch then I crossed the stream and then just followed this really muddy path all the way back up this way and then started climbing back up from here up to the car park again now I've plotted the route as I mentioned on the OS Maps app it came out about 10.6 kilometers um, but there's a fair bit of uh, uppage involved so uh, measuring off my watch it came out around about 12 kilometers um, so uh, yeah really lovely walk 